And then we take a look now at Ghana's plans to make fresh bids in developing a corporate bond market and aiming at achieving five listings in the next three years. For more details on this, we're joined from London by Kise Antonio, Regional he Head of Product Development at EcoBank Capital. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. So, so let's just touch on uh, some of the ambitions here. Are these reachable? Would you say that uh, the, go the government has actually put very strong targets in place? Oh yes, um, um, they're, they're trying to put structures in place and um, no doubt having a, uh, a corporate bond market is going to bestow certain advantages for companies in Ghana. Um, firstly, I think um, it helps deepen the financial market and makes uh, the cost of borrowing cheaper since it provides an additional source of capital uh, for companies to tap into. Um, secondly, uh, it, it gives companies the ability to leverage their balance sheets uh, and the flexibility in how they do so. Um, uh, thirdly, it should help corporate governance since, um, I guess, as you well know, uh, bondholders can effectively shut down a company uh, if interest rate payments are missed. And uh, last but not the least, um, there's a death of financial instruments in Ghana, and with upcoming uh, pension reforms, um, having corporate debt securities provides um, an additional um, instrument, financial instruments yeah. for private fund managers to invest in. Well, I mean, let's just take this uh, conversation a step further and look at which companies are likely to be issuers. Looking at the Nigerian model, we know that banks are very dominant in this space. Do you think that a similar strategy will be taken in Ghana? Well, my colleagues at Ecobank uh, Capital and I have looked at this. Um, we think companies which high, have high investment outlays and have steady predictable cash flows will be uh, candidates for corporate bond issuances. Um, yes, we think banks uh, will be good candidates as well since they'll have the ability to uh, raise long-term capital for long-term investments. Um, we also think that companies in the power sector, uh, real estate sector, and uh, fast-moving consumer goods um, will be the ones to tap into uh, the corporate debt market. I mean, is that what you're saying with regards to uh, the other possible buyers of corporate bonds? I mean, you mentioned pension funds. Are we looking at diversification in terms of the buy-up of the bonds? Excuse me, I didn't get that direct with, question. With regards to other buyers, I mean, you mentioned the likes of pension funds being uh, the predominant yeah. players within this space. What other buyers are there? Well, I think uh, pension funds domiciled outside Ghana. Um, you're looking at other institutional investors like fixed income funds, um, insurance companies, uh, and... Um, banks as well and uh, we think these are the ones who are going to be patronizing uh, these corporate debt securities. Yeah, um, There's also a bit of a concern when you look at what is happening in Nigeria that government bonds in Nigeria crowding out the likes of corporate issuers. Is there a risk that we could see a similar trend playing out in Ghana? Um, I think there's a risk anywhere in this world where um, government um, issues uh, lots of paper. Um, and I think it's government's duty to effectively manage this by policy. I mean, you could have debt ceilings in place and uh, prudent uh, fiscal management is crucial where increased uh, expenditure sh uh, should be matched uh, by increased revenue generation. Mm. Let's also just touch on the foreign plays here. You mentioned that international pension funds might also show interest in the Ghanaian uh, corporate bond market. Uh, give us a little bit more light on this. and. Uh, whether, I mean, what kind of regions are you expecting to show interest? Um, well, we think um, y um, yields are low globally um, anywhere in the world. I mean, in Ghana, uh, we just looked at something where if you were to invest in Ghana paper and even providing for currency depreciation for the last three years, you'll still outperform paper anywhere in the world. Um, so I'll expect a lot of um, 
foreign investor interest and, and, and corporate and as well as sovereign debt yeah. issuances. Can and, I, can um, I just quickly interject I there? Think, I mean, uh, give us an indication of the yields as well and the overall interest rate environment that you're expecting going forward because that's also going to create the appetite that you're expecting. Um, well, government issued a three-year paper about two weeks ago, and uh, that was at about 15%, um, was about um, three and a half times oversubscribed. Uh, but about two weeks ago as well, government increased uh, the monetary policy rate by uh, 100 basis points. Um, being an election year, um, there's always challenges with prudent fiscal management. And uh, if I were a betting man, I'll think there'll be uh, future interest rate increases in the months ahead. Future rate in increases. I mean, what kind of numbers are you then expecting into this year? Um, well, I'll expect maybe the NPR to be about 15% uh, by the end of the year. And um, uh, government paper to be in that region as well. Uh, I mean, three-year government paper to be in that region as well um, for the 91-day T-bill. I expect maybe we should be about around 13.5%. Kase, thank you very much, sir, for joining us. It's great to have you on the program, and I hope you have a great weekend. Kase Antonio, regional head yeah, of product too. development at Echo Bank Capital, live from London.